So good afternoon, everyone. We're the finale speakers. And as always, I'm very happy to be in front of everyone and talk about the real estate market. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate my dear friend, Blanca. This is the fifth economic forum of the Manila Times. Let's give them a round of applause, the whole um, Manila Times team. And every year, I look forward to this because, you know, the last eight years had been really, really great. The Philippines have seen a very high economic growth rate, GDP growth rate at 6% plus. And the last four years, I always stand here and talk about the growth in the market, how you know, big these companies are taking space here in the country, how many developments these developers are doing all over the Philippines and outside the metro. Today is a little different. And uh, you've heard a lot of our speakers earlier talk about the market, the challenges, etc. I'm not gloomy, I'm still very optimistic, but I'm very realistic as well. I'll share with you some of the things that I feel and we see will affect the Philippine real estate economy. And globally, these are the things that we are seeing. This is from the World Economic Forum, and they have made this survey prior to the coronavirus outbreak. And as you can see, there are a lot of tensions and issues all over the world. Globally, the geopolitical concern, U.S.-China trade war, and near our home, the South China Sea dispute. And aside from that, the environment, the climate change, the bushfires that we see in Australia, and currently, I think, in Baguio also, we're seeing this. And above all these, the coronavirus, a new outbreak that's affecting all over, all around the world. And so far, we're very lucky because the Philippines is not that heavily affected. Mas matindi daw yung mikrobyo sa Pilipinas. Mas kaya ng Pinoy, di ba? But seriously, we are also feeling the effect of this virus in the country. This is the Philippines, you know, tourism industry, obviously, really hardly hit at the moment. I was interviewed last week by ANC, and they were pressing me for some numbers. What's the effect of this virus? What's happening in the, um, in the global market and here in the Philippines? Can you share some numbers? And we couldn't really give numbers yet because it's too early. You know, it happened like last month, January, and it's just Feb ending March now. So it's very hard to give data and facts at the moment. But we can forecast, we can see because we can feel it. We can feel it. We talk to all the developers in the market and the demand also coming from the POGO industry and the BPO industry and several traditional office takers. So when you look back 25 years, two decades, this is the history of the, you know, the tourist receipts as a percentage of GDP. And when you look at this, there were like, what, three sharp dips in the tourist receipts. What you can observe here is that 1993, when the Asian financial crisis hit, I was not in the labor market yet at that time. I graduated in 2003. SARS, I didn't also feel that much, but you'll see here that there is that dip in the tourist receipts. And then the global financial crisis also, we've seen that. We felt that in the Philippines in 2009, when the global market crashed and the BPO industry at that point started to come in the Philippines. So we felt that, but it was short. The Philippines was able to rebound fast. And right now, 10 years after, there is this coronavirus. So easily, if you look at this history, during SARS, it also came from China, and coronavirus is also from China. But they said, you know, it's global right now because of the supply chain at the moment, people are affected all over the world. So there's Italy, Iran, etc., etc., and even Korea, which is closer to home. So if you look at this easily, there will be a drop of about 0.3% to 0.5%. SARS in 2003, 8,000 people were affected, and the fatality rate was what? 800, they said, so that's about 10%. Um, coronavirus is not as fatal. Year to date, they said it's around 90,000 people globally are affected, but death is around 3,000. So it's less in terms of fatality rate. 
So if we say we're kind of gloomy and the market will be affected, if you look at that, that's just 0.3% of the whole um, percentage of the Philippine GDP or 0.5%, which is what? A million dollars in terms of revenue that will be out this year, if ever. There will be no rebound right away. And the Pogo market, obviously, will be also affected. It's from China. It's very controversial, most talked about. And us in the real estate market, we felt it when they came in the Philippines six years ago. The market went crazy. And that's why you see a lot of developments in the Mall of Asia area, Asiana, as far as Cavite, because all these players are taking space in that part of town. And as far as the north now, Bulacan, um, Quezon City, Mandaluyong area. So this is just quick numbers. Globally, the Pogo industry, the outsourcing uh, market in that online gaming is around 60 billion US dollars. Made some research here. What we have in the Philippines is 3 billion US dollars, which is about 5% of the total global uh, Pogo market, online market. And in the Philippines, as of June 2019, we have about 56 PAGCOR licensed POGO um, operators. In the whole ASEAN region, the Philippines is the only one and the first who has given license to this online um, offshore gaming operators. And simply because we have a lot of office space, um, you know, there's labor here, but right, right now China wants to stop this. So that's an issue also. And as we speak, the market this online gaming companies occupies 1.14 million square meters of office space how big is this so if you're familiar with sm mega mall it's like two sm mega mall so that whole building can be occupied by these pogo um, workers and if you divide one million to about six because one person occupies six uh, square meters that's the building code. So roughly, you'll get um, 200,000 employees. And you, multi you multiply that by two because there will be two shifts in, in one um, desk. So easily 4,000 um, POGO workers currently in the Philippines, yung mga registered. We don't know how the others that are not registered. So easily, if you compute this, um, the salaries, the labor, um, you know, the taxes, real estate cost, consumption, etc., we can easily deduce around 11 billion US dollars or 3% of the GDP. That's the size of this pogo industry. It's only 3% of the whole Philippine economy at the moment. And I made some quick, quick and dirty numbers here, assumptions. This is just an estimate. But when you look at this, if the Pogo market is around 400,000 square meters, and if there will be a delay, because as we speak, we talk to some of them, they're not expanding at the moment. Of course, they're in that wait and see mode, and their employees are mostly Chinese from the mainland. Therefore, it's hard for them to come back. There is travel ban all over right now, China, Korea, and we heard Japan will soon you know, do that. And, and if the market will just stop and these companies will not grow, so we're expecting around six months of delay and therefore probably around the second half of this year we'll see another rebound and people, companies will start to lease space, take space, buy property, rent property. So if we look at this quick computation, that's another 0.2% of the whole GDP, the Philippine GDP. So if you add this, with the tourism delays or loss that we're seeing at the moment because you go to Davao, you go to Boraca, you go to Cebu, you'll feel the effect of what's happening. Tourists, there's hardly tourists going around. So that's why the current administration is promoting domestic travel because they say it's safe, it's good, you go around, it's cheaper anyway. There are a lot of sales. Hotels are selling their uh, rooms cheaply now at 50% off. So with that, even the Congress, they made their quick estimate and they said, you know, we'll probably be hit by 0.12 at the most, 0.4%. So that's roughly 1% of the Philippine GDP, which is 3.6 billion US dollars. 
However, I am, as I've said, I'm optimistic, very positive, and thankful because when you look at this slide, Philippines were very resilient. We're growing. And the last eight years, very high GDP growth rate, 6% plus. And anywhere you go around the world, when you hit higher than six, that's a very good um, you know, growth for the country. We're very sensitive with what's happening around us and yet very resilient. And this is 21 years, two decades of positive growth rate for the Philippines. Despite who sits in the government and despite what's happening around us, we're still doing well, quite well. So this is from the World Bank and from ADB. And as you can see, the Philippines posted in 2019 one of the highest growth rate at 6%. Well, there was a cut down, five point, we ended at 5.9% because of the delays in the budget approval. However, when you look at this picture, still very good story, higher than, um, well, of course, the catch-up countries are doing better, but they're just catching up. When you look at the Southeast Asian market, we're better than Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand. And the Build, Build, Build project, I'm very positive about this. We need this. The Philippines is already in the radar. We're the number one call center in the world, second to none voice. And with this Build, Build, Build project, I think it will help us. I have a lot of friends from India, and India is a 150 billion US dollar BPO market. The Philippines is just 24 billion US dollars. So much room for growth there. The country head of Tata is over there, and I still remember 10 years ago when they started in the Philippines with just what, less than 500 people. Today, they're employing thousands of employees, and they're growing all over Metro Manila and outside Metro Manila. We need this project, we need good infrastructure, we need roads, we need good telco, we need good internet connection. And that's why the third telco should really work and should really support the growing Philippine um, market. And these are two slides. When you look at this, the GDP from, um, con from constructions, 2019, we've seen the highest in terms of GDP, GDP from construction. 1 trillion pesos. It has breached that mark. Very good story. That means the confidence is there. These developers, the SM, Mega World, Ayala, Robinsons, Double Dragon, all of them are investing in the real estate market. And when you look at the real estate loans, people are bar borrowing money. Um, the public sector, the private sector are also borrowing money and investing in the real estate market. Office market and the condominium market in the last 10 years have grown tremendously. Um, it's demand-driven. Prices have gone up despite the supply. It's not going down because no one's speculating. People are buying, people are leasing space. Average rent right now all over the metro is around 1,000 peso square meters and it's steadily increasing at about 6-7% annually. And what are the opportunities that we're seeing? There are challenges, but as a good business person, the public sector, the private sectors, they see opportunities in this market. And this one is very promising, the Real Estate Investment Trust. Why are we excited about this? Because it's been like 10 years and the first one that will be approved right, right now, it's Ayala Land. Ayala is the first one. And all the big players, they want to enter into this market. It's, it's good because you know, it's one of the best ways for this big player to get cheap money and invest in real estate. And they're targeting the 35% of the Filipinos, those who have 5,000 to half a million peso in the bank. You can participate in this. And the current law states that annually, they should return back 90% to shareholders. So this is very good for those seeking dividends. No, um, You get higher um, interest rate compared to putting your money in the bank. How big is the real estate investment trust market? Made some research here. Globally, it's around 360 billion US dollars, as big as the whole Philippine economy. 
And in Asia, there are around 121 companies that are already participating in the Real Estate Investment Trust. And in Asia, half of that, they're in Japan. As you can see, the average dividend is 4.4% because um, interest rates in Japan is also very low. Philippines, Ayala said they will put, what, $300 million or $0.3 billion US dollars, just one company at the moment. But I'm excited about that because, as you can see, these are all big countries, developed countries, and they are successful. If we can implement this well in the country, then we'll see a lot of growth also. These companies will buy, invest, and with that comes employment also. And these people, once employed, of course, will consume, will buy, will eat outside. And that will fuel the whole economic development of the country. And the office market, I'll make this quick, um, very, very quick. I always say that it's one of the best barometers of a growing economy because once office spaces are built and taken, that means jobs are created in the market. Hindi mapupuno yung mga building kung walang trabaho, di ba? And currently, the Philippine market, the Philippine economy is driven by the BPO industry employing thousands of Filipinos. And the POGO is there, obviously. And there are a lot of other businesses. The locals are also growing and improving their workplaces and taking office spaces. How big is the Philippine market? 2019, 2020, not much movement. But as you can see, every year, almost a million square meters of office space are being flush in the market. New buildings, new office spaces. And almost all of that are absorbed and taken. And prices have gone up every year for the last nine years. What's being supplied is taken. Walang bubble because these office spaces are fully leased at the moment. And the first quarter 2020 is still the same, running at 1,100 pesos per square meter. As we speak today, the total supply that is expected to enter the market is less than a million square meters, 800,000 square, meter, 800, square meters. And almost 35% of that, 35% already signed and taken, meaning companies have paid, signed contract for either minimum three years to maximum of five-year leases. So what's left for us to take or absorb within the year is just half a million square meters. Kaya bayan, will it be taken? Will there be no oversupply? And I feel that it will be absorbed in the market given the current situation. So this is the whole office market. Gano kalake, how big is the office market of the Philippines? It's 10 million square meters all over the Philippines. And bulk of the office developments are in Metro Manila and about 15% outside Metro Manila. So in Cebu, Davao, Clark, uh, Iloilo, some other parts of the Visayas, and as far as Cavite, Laguna, Bulacan. So bulk of the action, they're really happening in Metro Manila. And as you can see, the supply has been steadily growing at a million square meters every year for the last three years. We've seen some decline starting this year and the next few years. But most developers, when they plan, it will enter the market in the next two years. And there are already a lot of pre-commitments, meaning companies are signing even before the building is up and completed. So just to show you how much or how big each city is right now in terms of square meters. So um, Taguig now is the biggest in terms of office space, in terms of supply followed by Makati, and then um, Quezon City. There is a lot of land in Quezon City. In the future, two to three years down the road, we'll see an additional office supply in the Quezon City area, followed by Pasig, Ortigas area, and then Taguig. When you look at the prices, of course, the, the most expensive still is in Makati, with the highest rental at about 2,000 pesos. And if you want cheaper option, you go either further south in Alabang area or further north in the um, Quezon City area. In terms of land value, BGC and Makati, they're the most expensive. In BGC right now, you won't believe it, but there are properties there selling at a 
1.4 million pesos per square meter, and some said it's higher. But the last record, I believe, is at 1.4 million pesos per square meter, depending on how high you can go and build. This is the office demand year on year. The take up is around 900,000 square meters, less than a million. And it's the, comp the composition is this. The POGO market, the BPO market, and traditional office takers. Last year in 2019, the online gaming has surpassed the take up of the BPO industry. The outsourcing industry is still growing at a very steady pace of around uh, 5 6% annually, and BPAP is estimating that it will grow. The outsourcing industry is still e estimating that it will grow. This is the online gaming. I've shared this already. It's about 10% of the total stock occupying 1.14 million square meters. And the, still a very good story. Number one in voice, second to India. We want to be like India because they churn a lot of um, uh, engineers year on year. We have to upskill. We have to educate more. We have to improve our math. And uh, we, we hope to have a lot of engineering graduates to invite and to attract a lot of big players to also do their back office, higher value work such as accounting, engineering, etc. here in the country. The growth in the BPO industry according to BPAP is still positive and they're ex estimating around 6 to 7% growth rate in the next two years. And the flexible office market, it's here to stay. Regis is here. And there are a lot of other players who are in this instant office market. Why is it important? I believe it is, and it will be very important, especially today, with the uncertainty that we're seeing in the market. Because plug-and-play model, you can easily expand, you can easily shrink, you can relocate anytime. You're buying flexibility. And these companies are taking the risk out of these companies who do not want to spend on building their office space and spend more on the capital expense. Provincial outlook, as I've shared, outside the metro, it's just about 10-15% of the office market. And it's also growing. The township developments, earlier today you've heard Kevin talked about Mega World's township projects. Um, Double Dragon is doing that. Even Dennis Uy of Udena, he has a big project in Clark, Pampanga. So this is the way to go. People want to be in an area wherein they can do everything. They can live, work, play in that area. And it's hap happening not just in Metro Manila, but outside the, um, the Man Metro Manila area because the current administration is pushing development. Wow, brown out. Outside Metro Manila. The retail market, the favorite of all the ladies in front. My sister's here. It's growing. Uh, Rose can tell you more about this. She's the head of the Philippine retail industry. But as you can see, um, the retail, the spending um, in e-commerce is not that big yet. Very, very small. I believe our average is, what, $20 per person, while in Europe, in, in the U.S., it's around $4,000 per person, average spending. It will continue the fusion of the Malls with the e-commerce will grow. In the Philippines, it's, it's going there. As you can see from this next slide, SM partnered with Lazada, Ayala with Zalora. They have their own logistics. They have their own online portal wherein people can buy online. And therefore, there is opportunity there. The logistics market, the warehousing market in, that, in the real estate segment will also grow. In the residential market outlook, of course, it will be affected with what's happening. But as you can see, bulk of the developments are in the mid-range, 6 to 9 million pesos per condominium unit. And most of them, Makati and BGC is still the preferred and the area, best-selling area. Always a safe place to have condominiums in Makati or in BGC. And similar to the office market, if you want a cheaper condominium uh, unit, you go either further south in Alabang or further north in um, Quezon City area. And the most expensive would always be in BGC and Makati area. And the project of um, SM along Ayala Avenue, they said right now, is doing higher than 400,000 pesos per square meter. The dormitory, this is the halfway home 
um, developments, it will continue to grow, it will stay because most of the BPO employees, they need this, they prefer to live near their workplace, saves them time, the traffic that we're seeing at the moment. It's better to live near your workplace and then just go home during the weekends. And why the Philippines? You know this, we have everything in place. Cost competitive in terms of rental, the labor market, Yes, they said sometimes, you know, the BPO industry, they need more support, especially with the new tax implementation and changes. But what's still going on, what's still working best for us is the Filipinos. The, a lot of companies are coming here because of the talent. High quality labor, big population, almost half or more than half of the Filipinos can speak, um, are employable, and almost everyone can speak English. This is... In, in conclusion, these are my key takeaways for everyone. As I've shared, the coronavirus will, of course, affect the real estate market. As I've shared, roughly, very bravely, I am saying 1% or 3.5 billion US dollars. But that's just very small compared to other projects that we can get. The Philippine economy, according to World Bank, is still projecting a very high economic growth rate. The regional growth will continue outside Metro Manila. So we have, of course, outside the nearest one would be Bulacan, Clark, Cavite, Laguna, etc. And the Philippine retail industry, the fusion of the malls and the e-commerce will um, make way for the growth in the warehousing and the logistic market. And though the coronavirus will, of course, affect the real estate market, we feel that there will just be a slowdown and probably after, you know, around July, we'll see people starting to go back to the regular um, activity and take more space. This is us. If you want uh, a deeper market update, let us know. Happy to help you in the, your real estate concern. And with that, thank you. I wish everyone a pleasant afternoon.